Hello, I'm Ian and I play with drones. And last week, DJI changed how their Fly Safe map worked, removing the majority of geofence zones across not only the UK, but around nine EU countries, including France, Germany, and Ireland. For those that don't know, geozones are areas that have flight restrictions, either warning you or prohibiting you from flying. And until last week, when you opened the Fly Safe app in the Fly app, you had a confusing mix of official restricted zones imposed by the Civil Aviation Authority as well as an overlay of other different coloured, different zones that DJI had drawn up themselves. Then last week, as mentioned, all the DJI based geo zones disappeared. And whilst I did do a quick video on that the same weekend, I've now had a fair few people asking questions or worse, demonstrating just how confused things still are, which risks way more than a slap on the wrist these days. So I thought I'd try and clarify a few things in a nice quick video for you. First off, um, let's do the basics. Most of us know or have heard of the 400 foot or 120 meter max height rule. And this is pretty universal around the world, to be honest. It keeps drones below the usual 500 foot minimum altitude for manned aircraft. Despite this, most DJI drones allow a variable altitude limit of up to 500 meters, which is a completely illegal height to fly at, at least here in the UK and the EU. So why do DJI allow it? Well, that's simply down to giving users the ability to fly in specific areas like up hills or mountains, as the law stipulates the maximum height between the drone and the ground. Whilst the info and the control you see on your screen is actually relative height between the takeoff point and the drone. Remember, most cars can easily do well over 100 miles an hour, but you don't drive f that fast unless you want the fun of a major fine or a ban. The driver or the pilot has responsibility for their actions. So that's height. Let's look at where you can fly, because to be honest, where you can fly is, I think, the biggest variable. That affects us for every single flight we take. Now, when you look at the Fly Safe map on the Fly app, you're only going to see these orange enhanced warning zones, and almost all of them are around airports. These are actually known as uh, flight restriction zones or FRZs, and they're set by the CAA in the UK. And they are simply stipulating the warning zone stretching five kilometers from the center of the airport and the little runway extensions. But here is what's confusing people, because when you check the key on the Fly Safe map, you see how these are only shown as enhanced warning zones that you can actually unlock after dismissing an on-screen warning. They're orange. They are not the actual red prohibited zones. So again, how come? Well, again, it's all about location. Whilst you better not be flying anywhere near somewhere like Heathrow, what about a quiet airfield in the middle of nowhere? If you look at the CAA's drone code text, it clearly states that you can't fly unless you have permission from the airport's air traffic control. It goes on to show the general shape and dimensions of the flight restriction zone and clearly states not to fly within it. But their wording caters for those situations where you're less than five kilometers from an airfield and can actually contact the tower for permission to fly. This would be quite common if you're doing commercial work and had to do something like a roof inspection. It is, though, for most flyers, a rare event. But again, it's how the rules work. And that's why these zones are shown as orange warning zones rather than red prohibited zones. The bottom line is, though, unless you've had specific permission from the air traffic control for the specific flight you're doing in this specific location on this day, you cannot fly there. So hopefully clear. Where else to avoid trouble? Well, um, this comment made just this week does show how you need to keep up to date with new rules. The law is changing, it's certainly in the UK, to prohibit you from flying within 400 metres of prisons or young offenders institutions. And as I said last week, this comes with some chunky fines. It's worse because these zones no longer appear on the FlySafe app, although I'll be honest, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not this gets updated by the CAA on the uh, 25th of January uh, later this month, because that's when this specific prison no-fly zone law comes into effect. So, I don't know. How do you know? Uh, how do you know whether or not you can fly in a particular location? Well, that's where you probably want to use an app or a mobile-friendly website that has got additional risks 
overlaid. Now I've mentioned drone scene, I've mentioned uh, Altitude Angel before, and these are now even linked to by the CAA's uh, DroneCo website. So you know they're legit uh, applications or websites to use. Both of these have got layers that let you overlay various risks that are present on the ground. And whilst Altitude Angel is free, Drone Scene does have way more options and I think is easier to use and is just way more useful. Anyway, look, that is uh, airports and prison stuns. Where else? Well, for the most of it, it's just down to the size of the drone and the proximity of people. It really is that simple. If you've got one of these small sub 250 gram models, then you have got the greatest freedom to fly. In the UK, the restrictions are based on weight. In the EU, they're based on the numeric C label system that is partly based on weight as well and a few other technical specifications. But either way, these little models have the most freedom to fly as you can fly in most locations even if it involves flying high near or over uninvolved people, meaning you can even fly in towns. But you still need to use a head as people so easily get pissed off with drones, always assuming you're flying over them solely to look down and record whatever they happen to be doing, when in truth, you're probably far more likely to be just enjoying the landscape. So to me, you should always use your head and think about what consequences there may be for flying. Even these small models are not allowed to fly over crowds. So stadiums with crowds, crowded beaches or parks are no good. Even in the open countryside, there may be some restrictions depending on where you are and crucially who owns the land that you're controlling the drone from. Uh, the National Trust has a blanket ban on all drones despite owning land that covers huge swathes of the countryside. And I really do think it's a shame and it's a lazy and blunt solution to a problem that frankly, I don't think even exists. That said, remember, it's the CAA that controls airspace, not landowners. Landowners can legitimately stop you from controlling the drone on their land, but as long as you're up high enough to avoid any privacy concerns, you can legitimately fly over their land. But as ever, as I've said, just because you can doesn't mean to say you should. For this clip I did around Stonehenge, I checked the airspace restrictions and waited until after closing time so that A, I wouldn't piss off loads of people on the ground walking around the stones and B, I could get way better pictures. For me, it was a way better result. And on this type of flight, I've had a few questions on SSSIs or sites of special scientific interest. Uh, these are designated areas recognized for their outstanding ecological importance. And they're defined by Natural England or the relevant nation's body if you're up in Scotland, Wales or, or Northern Ireland. And they're designated as such for very, very good reasons very often involving wildlife. So I have to be really, really clear here. These areas are included in both Drone Scene and Altitude Angel as an overlay because you need to know if the area you're planning to fly in is an SSSI. If it is, then you as the pilot, again, have to take full responsibility for any flight you make. And whilst there is no specific airspace rule prohibiting you from flying over an SSSI, there are many other rules and laws that can affect the legality, if you like, of the flight you're intending to do. And often it relates to the disturbance of wildlife that could very easily see you in court and find. So my advice for SSSIs is avoid them altogether. If you do find yourself in the midst of a large stretch of countryside or coast that is designated as SSI, then find out why it's been designated from the area's website and make sure you cannot interfere with what is being protected. If it's migratory route for birds, then you may well be good to fly outside those migration times of year e equally. If it's uh, a type of plant, then you're probably good to fly. But it, if it's about, I don't know, mess nesting animals or birds, then low flying would absolutely be considered to be interfering with them and you may well end up in trouble. So generally, as I said, avoid SSSIs, but if you do fly, make sure you are not gonna be disturbing anything. Stay well high and keep in mind that you may well be challenged by people on the ground. So you know why it's an SSSI and be ready to explain how you are not actually causing an issue. Lordy, a bit longer than expected. Uh, right, what else? Uh, last thing to mention, of course, is larger drones like the Air 3 or the Mavic 3. Uh, in the UK, any model heavier than 250 grams is automatically relegated to open countryside irrespective of whether or not it's got a numeric C1 label, which does give you different flight rights in um, EASA-based countries uh, like e uh, a lot of EU countries. 
In general, these larger drones cannot fly within 150 meters of any congested area defined as residential, recreational, commercial, and industrial. So basically, that's anywhere that people are living or working or an area specifically for recreation like a town park. Now the CAA have updated their guidance and made it clear that their view is even a single house is a residential area. And you also need to make sure you keep a horizontal distance of 50 meters from anyone not directly involved with your flight. And this is where again, it gets a little bit messy because whilst you might take off legally, you can end up stuck up in the air if uninvolved people have appeared and started walking nearby. Hovering overhead until they pass isn't enough because the rule is pretty clear on keeping a horizontal distance between the drone and anybody walking by. So if you are flying a larger model like the Air 3 or the Mavic 3, make sure you're in an area that is unlikely to have anybody else walking uh, into the area that you're flying. In truth, I'll be honest, I could talk for hours on where you can fly and what's permitted and what's prohibited. And frankly, I could lose the will to live as some people do. But as I said at the start, it's not actually that bad. And in some respects, it is getting better, I think. Remember, five years ago, there was no exemptions for these little drones. And you couldn't even think about flying in a town or a city. And until recently, the DJI Geo zones, they often stopped you from taking off in places that you were perfectly entitled to fly in. I actually think we're quite lucky in the UK. Many other countries have far tighter restrictions like Germany, Belgium or Scandinavian countries. Just try flying a drone in Belgium. So look, if this has helped. Give me a little thumbs up as ever. If you know anybody that's recently got a drone, maybe share this video with them. I'll put uh, links below for Drone Scene and Altitude Angel. Either way, let me know your thoughts. Drop a comment below. Remember, much of this is common sense and interpretation rather than hard facts and rules. So respect other people's opinions and arguments and keep things nice and friendly, please. But on that, until next time, keep calm. Have fun, stay safe and sane, happy flying.